Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next actual lesson. Let's talk about enabled and disabled. We've already looked at how we can create styles to make something enabled or disabled. So we previously went into the widget style manager and we created a primary button that had a disabled state. Now, how do we teach Axure to use that disabled state and then switch to make it enabled when a certain interaction happens on the page? So let's grab another button and start from scratch. So let's say here's our button and let's take a look at our interactions pane and our properties. Let's say it's disabled by default. Now that didn't do anything because we haven't applied our styles. By default, this button does not have a disabled style associated with it. We would have to say add style effect for disabled, choose widget style and our primary button disabled. So now we have enabled and disabled. They look pretty different, but let's not get hung up on that. You can always correct that in uh, whatever you're doing. So let's say this starts out as disabled by default, which will be the way it is because we have checked this checkbox. Now, just for practice, let's, cr let's create a checkbox. Just a standard one from Axure will do. So I'm going to drag that out from our library. I'll just drop it here. And I'm going to write something on it like, I agree to the terms. And let's imagine that when people check the checkbox, this button is enabled. But if they uncheck the checkbox, this button is disabled. So uh, in our case, let's take a look at uh, building those interactions. Now, uh, in this uh, program, we're also talking about when do you want to use click or tap versus selected and unselected, because we could say when people click, if it's selected, do this. When people click, if it's selected, unselected, do the other thing. Or we could use these selected and unselected events. To me, the difference is, do I want to make sure that a human clicked on it versus this checkbox being selected or unselected, possibly because a human touched it and possibly because of some sort of domino effect. I'm not totally worried about a domino effect here. If there were some domino effect that unchecked this checkbox, I would still want this button to end up disabled. So we're going to use selected and unselected. You're welcome to practice with click or tap with conditions if you would like, but for selected and unselected, we won't need conditions. So the action starts on the checkbox where we want to see if people have selected this or unselected this. If this is selected, now what's the action we want Axure to take? We want them to enable that button. Now I can say enable, but let's face it, I'm not too sure which button I'm talking about here. I should have named it, but you can see when I mouse over this button, it got outlined on the screen over here. Watch this again. That helps me know I'm choosing the right thing. But again, the surefire way to know you're choosing the right thing is to have given that thing a name. In this case, let's just run with it. And I'm saying button and then look over here at the parameters. I'm going to say enable. And I can say, wait, there's something else I want Axure to do. 
Um, but again, we can also take our baby step testing before we do the other, the other part of it. So let's take a look. And we've got it disabled by default. And now when I click, it's enabled. Okay, that's working. Good baby step testing. And now we can write the other trigger, the other event, and say, if this becomes unselected, and remember, I don't have to write a condition here because the if it's unselected or if it's selected is built into the event. The event is already looking for this to be unselected. So I don't have to say if someone clicks and it's unselected as we did in another exercise here. So I can say enable or disable, same button. Again, I should have named it disable. So make sure you've chosen disable for the unselected and enable for the selected. Now we should be able to run with this. Now some people might wonder why I didn't just use toggle. If this thing is selected or unselected, just toggle this thing. You can certainly try that, but sometimes I have more than one action tied to the checking of this checkbox or the unchecking of it. And that way by writing two completely separate interactions, I have more fine control over what happens in each instance. If really the only thing this does is to toggle this thing, you could write that toggle. Let's do a quick copy paste and I'll show you how I would do it if I wanted to make a quick toggle. In fact, I will call this button toggle to remind us of what it does. Now that means I can kind of clear out what I've already written on the copy pasted one. Let's start totally fresh and we'll build a new interaction. And this time let's name this button so we don't get it wrong. I will call this the toggle button. Okay, so back on the checkbox, let's write our interaction. And we can say, if selected or unselected, so if either thing happens, enable or disable the toggle button with a toggle. And remember, toggle means whatever this thing was, make it the opposite. And that's usually uh, in action for things that have kind of binary states, on and off, checked and unchecked, seen and invisible. So toggle, 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 toggle. You could certainly get away with that if the toggle works for you, or if a number of different actions are tied to the checking or unchecking, then you would want the separate interactions so that you can more finely control them. So that would be a short version of how you can control enabling and disabling of things. You can have these things start disabled and then become uh, enabled, or you could have something start enabled and for some reason become disabled. Um, so that would be it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next video.